So guys, after a long summer, we are finally back for our weekly championship score predictions. Let's jump into it. Welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm absolutely buzzing to have championship football back tomorrow. It feels like it's been gone away for all too long. Obviously, we usually bring these videos out on the Friday, but as it's the first one of the season, I thought we'd go a day earlier with this one. If you want to get involved in this year's Prediction League, all you need to do is leave your score predictions in the comments down below. We also have a Patreon exclusive Prediction League, which is going to be running throughout the whole season as well. So if you want to get involved in that, feel free to check it out in the description down below. You need to sign up to just the lowest tier on Patreon there to go ahead and get entered into that. We've also got some cool fantasy football games and stuff going on there as the season goes on as well. But I'm absolutely buzzing to jump into this new season, guys. If we could hit 500 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. But without any further ado, let's jump into these matches. And so let's start out with Friday night's opening game between Bournemouth and West Brom. This should be quite the curtain raiser to the new championship season. I'd back both these sides to do quite well this season so it'll be a nice early test early on for both Valerie Ishmael and Scott Parker coming into their new jobs. Now both teams do have some injuries coming into this game. Bournemouth are set to be without Ben Pearson and Jefferson Lerma which in the midfield battle that could be quite crucial. You know West Brom could get a bit more of a stamp of authority um, into that area now. Stacey I think is also a doubt and we're probably not likely to see Dan Juma featuring either. For West Brom David Button is probably going to be in goal as they're still ironing out the situation with Sam Johnson. It's looking more than likely that he will stay but David Button is expected to be the goalkeeper for this one regardless. Now we have seen Bournemouth in competitive action so far this season. They were in action over the weekend in the EFL Cup first round when they put five goals past MK Dons and despite it not being the best showing from the away side, Bournemouth looked pretty good in that game. You know, David Brooks scored a brace in that game. I'm backing him to be quite good this season for Bournemouth especially if Dan Juma does move on. There's going to be more of a reliance on him to chip in with the goals and assists this season but this is going to be such a fascinating opening game I can't help but feel like with the injuries that Bournemouth potentially have coming into this one they may be a bit of a miss and West Brom could take advantage of that West Brom have looked good in pre-season so far as well I think they're yet to concede the goal under Valerie Ishmael I know that you can't read all too much into pre-season but they're looking quite well drilled at the back so far for a score prediction in this one a draw wouldn't surprise me, but I think I'm just going to edge towards West Brom in this game. Just because of some of the absentees that Bournemouth have in their side, West Brom may get a little bit more joy out of this one. So I'm going to go 2 on West Brom, FIFA's going to go 2 0 Bournemouth. Next up, we're going into the Saturday kickoffs. We've got Blackburn going up against Swansea at Ewood Park. Now, with Blackburn at the moment, the big talking point is the Adam Armstrong situation. Whether he'll be involved in this game or not, is yet to be seen. I think I'd be quite surprised if he was involved from the start. You know, I'm not sure where his headspace is at at the moment. The interest in him has really vamped up over the last couple of days. So if he's not involved, you've then got the possibility to play Bereton through the middle or something like that, which isn't bad. You know, I, I have backed him to have a good season, but uh, it'll be an interesting one um, in that scenario regardless. Swansea are obviously at the start of the process at the moment under Russell Martin. It'll be interesting to see how much of a sort of blueprint and his ideas he's actually got across to the Swansea side so far. I do think they're looking a little bit light in a few areas, you know, they've got gaps to plug up over these next few weeks in the transfer window, but it's an interesting matchup early on. Last season, Blackburn started out, especially at home, like an absolute house on fire. They scored an absolute abundance of goals, and then their record just sort of regressed as the season went on. So they may get off to a fast start this season. I think I'm just going to edge Blackburn in this one. I don't know, I've got a bit of a feeling about them that Bereton may score like a brace or something like that. And with Swansea still sort of patching up their squad at the moment, Russell Martin getting his ideas across to the side. For a score prediction in this one, I'm going to go 2 1 Blackburn. Coming up next, we are heading to Ashton Gate, where we've got Bristol City heading up against newly promoted Blackpool. Now, Ashton Gate wasn't really a happy hunting ground for Bristol City last season. They had the third worst home record in the league last time round, as they only picked up 24 points. They were the second lowest scoring team at home in the league as well, as only Wickham scored fewer goals than they did at Ashton Gate. So Blackpool have got a chance in this one. It's not an awful opening fixture for them, and obviously Blackpool's success from last season in League One was really sort of built upon 
around their defensive stability. So I am anticipating this game to be a fairly low scoring game. Obviously that's one of the real issues from last season that Bristol City need to sort out this time around. They had the fewest amounts of shots in the championship last time Bristol City. I do see Bristol City being decent defensively if everyone's sort of fit and available um, you know on paper I think they've got a decent back line especially with Rob Atkinson um, coming into the mould now as well Blackpool have had quite a busy summer transfer window so far so they've got quite a few new faces to sort of integrate into the squad and stuff like that. For a score prediction in this one I'm going to go for a draw I think I'm going to go for a 1-1 in this game with FIFA going 2-0 Blackpool. Coming up next we've then got Cardiff going up against Barnsley now Cardiff's preparation coming into this game isn't exactly ideal with some of the players that they could be missing. I think that Morrison's still going to be a miss. Um, a couple of that other players who are coming back from international duty, including Kiefer Moore, who I think is currently recovering from COVID. So it's touch and go whether he'll be available for this game or not. He's not I don't think he's featured in any of the pre-season matches for Cardiff so far. It's also going to be the first chance that we get to see of Marcus Shops Barnsley as well. You know, quite a change from last time under Valor and Ishmael. There's the possibility that maybe Barnsley could grow into this season um, as that sort of new style of play gets translated over to the team um, as the year goes on and things like that. But they've certainly got a chance in this one with Cardiff potentially missing a couple of their big hitting players. In terms of the head-to-head -head record between these two sides, it's definitely Cardiff who have edged this one in recent years. In fact, Barnsley have only won one of their last 14 games up against Cardiff. But, I mean, on the day, does that mean anything? You can let me know down below. For a score prediction in this one, I think that Cardiff may just grind this one out. I'm going to go 2-1 to the home side maybe with Cardiff to score a couple of set pieces or something like that. FIFA's going to go 1-0 Cardiff. Coming up next, we then got Derby going up against Huddersfield. Now, Huddersfield, of course, have quite a few new faces to settle into this squad. It could take a bit of time for all them to gel um, into the way that Corbran wants them to be playing football this season. But... Let's be real, they have the opening day fixture here that probably every other championship team wanted to have this early on. They're going up against Derby, who, as of recording, are in a fight against time to get players registered in time for this fixture. Their pre-season preparation hasn't exactly been ideal, and you know, if they're not able to get these players registered in time, they're going to be throwing out, you know, the half the team's going to be youth players that are making up the 11 for this game. So, Huddersfield have to be the overwhelming favourites, you feel like, coming into this game. I do remember a couple seasons ago when these two sides met on the opening day of the season. I think it was Philip Koku's first game in charge of Derby. Tom Lawrence had an absolute worldie in that game, scored a couple of goals. I can't see any way past Huddersfield for this one. I'm going to go 2-0 Huddersfield in this game. FIFA saying 1-0 Derby. Coming up next, we've then got Luton going up against Peterborough. I have a good feeling about this game. I think this one could be quite an entertaining one in the end. Now, Luton and their quest to sort of go ahead and improve on last season's finish, their home form is going to be quite pivotal to that because there were quite a few draws last season. I think that only Millwall drew more home matches than Luton did last season. None of their home matches finished as draws last time around. So these are obviously the sort of games that they're going to be targeting to try and go ahead and get three points from. But Peterborough Peterborough are going to be no uh, lie down for this one, are they? I anticipate Peterborough to come into this game and this season really looking to play on the front foot. Clark Harris was back featured in their pre-season towards the end of it, so he is expected to be um, up for and firing for this game as well, which is another added benefit for them. And I have the feeling that both teams are just going to go for it in this one. So I'm for a score prediction in this one, I'm going to go for an entertaining 2-2 draw. FIFA is going quite the opposite to that. They're going for a boring 0-0 draw. But uh, yeah, I've got a good feeling about that one. So two sort of like high energy teams looking to go for it. Yeah, should be a good game. Next up, we are then heading to Deepdale. we got Myrside North End going up against newly promoted Hull. Now, Preston was not a great place to be in terms of home form last year either. We got off to an absolutely awful start, and we sort of picked it up as the year went on, but it's going to be important for North End to hit the ground running this time under Frankie McAvoy. You know, we ended last season with him very good. We need to take that momentum into this season here, because on paper, we've got a decent first few fixtures of the season. Hull, I'm anticipating their biggest threats this season and in this match to come from those wide areas from Lewis Potter and from Wilkes sort of cutting inside and I'm anticipating North End to go with a back five in this game so that's going to be a really interesting tactical battle are those two wide men going to be able to sort of play in the spaces of our midfield get in behind those wing backs and sort of get our wide centre backs isolated in 1v1 areas because if they are 
they could have some, you know, they could cause us some problems in this game. I have the feeling that the first goal is going to be absolutely massive for this one. If Preston score first, I think we might be alright, but if Hull score first, I think we could struggle to get back into this one. The other day, Preston completed the loan signing of Daniel Iverson, who's back on loan for the season. I'm expecting him to go straight into the 11 for me, one of the best goalkeepers in the league last season, and that should see us be a little bit more stable at the back. For a score prediction in this game, I think one goal either way could win this one, to be honest with you. I'm going to back North End for it, but 1-0 Hull also wouldn't surprise me. I'm going to go 1-0 North End, though, and back the boys. FIFA's going for a 1-1 draw. Coming up next, we then got QPR going up against Millwall. What an opening day fixture this is. Now, a lot of people are backing QPR, myself included, for the top six this season. But Millwall, I also have a feeling, will be there or thereabouts. And Millwall are a good sort of counterbalance to QPR this season. You know, QPR look like they're going to be this really sort of energetic, exciting side to watch going forward. I saw some of the highlight clips from the pre-season match they had against Man United and they looked like they were absolutely flying at them at times. But like I say, Millwall are sort of the opposite way around to that. You know, defensively, they're going to be really stable this season. They've added to that back line with Daniel Ballard. Under Gary Rowett, they are probably one of the most structured sides in the league. So this is going to be a really interesting opening day test for this QPR side to sort of see how good they actually are. You know, if they can get a bit of joy out of this Millwall Millwall back line. I think both sides will be strong this season overall. Whether Millwall have the firepower going forward though is another thing. You know, a lot of their hopes at the moment are pinned on sort of Benneke Ferbe coming good, but obviously they have Jed Wallace who's one of the best wingers in the league as well. Looking forward to seeing how Judge Savile gets on at, um, in his return to the den as well. So for a score prediction in this one, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw for the opening day for this one. Uh, Thief is going to go for a 0-0. Should be a good game. Coming up next, we then got Stoke going up against Reading. Now, I think I've read somewhere that the last three meetings between these two sides have all finished as nil-nil draw. So I hope for the sake of Stoke fans and the Reading fans that are going to this game that that doesn't happen in this one. Neither team particularly finished last season with a bang, and they both sort of tailed off as the year went on. With Stoke, though, I'm quite excited about the recruitment that they've done over the summer so far. They've used that money that they got in for Collins quite sensibly so far, actually, and sort of redistributed it. Um, throughout the squad. I think they're looking stronger um, for that at this point in time. With Reading, the same can't really be said at the moment. Obviously, they've had a couple of big departures, but under their current embargo, they're limited in what they can do in terms of bringing players in. I think that may affect them um, at the start of the season as well. You know, the way they finished last season with Lucas Giles' form tailing off, he needs to rediscover that. Maytay's injury is another thing um, added on top of that as well. So, for a score prediction in this one, I think I am leaning towards Stoke for the opening day here. I'm going to go 1-0 to the home side with FIFA going 1-1. Next up then and as the later kickoff on Saturday we are heading to Bramall Lane as we have Sheffield United who are going up against Birmingham. Now I don't know what it is about Birmingham but over the last couple of seasons now they've had this bit of a knack about them to just pick up a result on the opening day of the season out of nowhere. I think on the last two opening days of the season they beat in Brentford 1-0 on each of them. The one they had against them a couple years ago at Griffin Park. I think that Brentford had about 30 shots in that game. Birmingham had one one shot in the whole game, a Christian Pedersen header from outside the box, and somehow they won it 1-0. I'm sure they'd take a similar result um, in this match here today. With Birmingham, there's been quite a bit of transfer activity so far, so Bowie has a few new players and faces to integrate into this side. With Sheffield United, things have been a little bit slower, but they have so far been able to keep all those sort of big hitters at the club, which can only be seen as a positive. I know that I mentioned before that I don't like to read all too much into pre-season results, but I think in Birmingham's last pre-season game, West Brom put four goals past them and it, I, I read the sort of match reports from that game it seemed like West Brom's wing backs were causing them real problems in that game with overloads in wide areas if Sheffield United do a similar thing in this sort of game with all the quality that they have in those wing back positions maybe we could see a similar occurrence in here for a score prediction I think I am going to back Sheffield United for this one I'm going to go 2-0 to the home side with FIFA going 1-0 Sheffield United. After that we are then heading into the Sunday matches. First of all we are heading to Craven Cottage where we have Fulham going up against Middlesbrough. Really interesting one here on the Sunday. I've back Fulham like a lot of people for the title but I've also backed Middlesbrough for the top six as well so I don't think there'll be all too much in this game. Now this is going to be Marco Silva's first competitive game in charge of Fulham and typically his sides tend to get off to a good start to the season. You know he had a good bounce when he arrived at Hull. Same happened at Watford and then Everton as well so a good start to the season can make absolutely all the difference for Fulham but Borough's no easy task on the opening day. Uh, Martin Peiro has just been confirmed as a Middlesbrough player and um, we sort of knew 
knew about that one for a while, but he was quarantining before that signing could be officially announced. It'll be interesting to see if he's thrown into that starting 11 straight away for Middlesbrough, who I've quite liked the recruitment of um, so far this summer. You know, they brought in the likes of Crooks, Ipizu, Lumley as well. Fulham, obviously, their big signing, Harry Wilson so far, and they've all got, I mean, they've already got absolutely all the star power in the world for the championship, haven't they? So, for this game, I wouldn't be surprised to see Middlesbrough throw a bit of a spanner in the works, but I am expecting Fulham to be very strong. I'm going to go with a draw in this one. I'm going to go for a 1-1, one -one, where Steve is going 1-0 Fulham. And then as our last game to go ahead and predict for the weekend, we have the later kickoff on Sunday, and we are heading back to the Rico, where we have Coventry going up against Nottingham Forest. Now, the majority of Forest matches last season, especially after Houston took over, were fairly low scoring and quite tight. I think that this game will fall along on a similar sort of pattern. Commentary fans will obviously be keen to give their team the boost in this one, you know, being back at the Rico now, they'll want to hit the ground running. Forest, as they usually tend to, especially in these sort of away matches, will look to um, have things stable at the back. They just need that bit more of a spark in the final third this season, you know. We'll wait and see if any of their sort of returning players that are coming back into the side this season will have that effect on them, because so far in the transfer market, um, they've not really looked to go on and improve the area of the squad. First goal for this game does feel quite important. Um, I think that whoever goes on to score first in this game probably goes on to win it and grinds out the result from there. I've got a bit of a sneaky suspicion that Forrest may edge this one. Thief is back in 1-0 Coventry, so I'll back 1-0 Forrest. But guys, there we have it. There are my Championship Week 1 score predictions. I am absolutely buzzing to get back into some Championship action, guys. So, as always, make sure to leave your score predictions in the comments down below. If you'd like to, check out the Patreon as well. Link to that is down below, where we will be having a Patreon-exclusive prediction league running throughout the season. But apart from that, guys, that will now wrap it up for today's video. So, if you did go on to enjoy, make sure to leave like and do stick around for some regular championship content. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next one.